Column-based plates are structural elements designed to spread the load under the column in such a way that the bearing pressures at the support are within the allowable limits. For biaxial moments, the base plates may be in partial bearing, leading to a very complex design. But what is the procedure to design a biaxial base plate? This is Javier Encinas, and today we're going to discuss a step-by-step biaxial base plate example using ASIP Steel software. Let's get started. As an example, consider the base plate that supports a steel column, shown here. The column size is W10 by 49 and is exposed to death, life, and seismic loads. The reactions are shown in this table. The concrete support is 36 by 36 in plan, but the column is offset, is 12 inches from the corner in both directions. So the goal is to design the base plate and the anchor rods for the AC716 load combination. To complete this design, we want to use ASDIP Steel software. I have already entered the information of the loads in the program to save time, so all the reactions in the statement of the problem have been entered in this table. We're going to use the LRFD design method. If we go to the geometry tab, here we can enter the information about the dimensions. The column size is W10 by 49, so we can set the base plate as 17 by 17 to leave space for the anchor rods. Also, we know that the concrete support is 36 inches by 36 inches, but the base plate is eccentric, is 12 inches from one corner in both directions. So all this information is already entered here. Graphically, we can see here the support and the base plate and the column. The column is eccentric in both directions, 12 inches from one corner. If we go to the materials tab, here we can enter the material properties. At the top, we are specifying seismic provisions uh, being forced in this design. Click on Show Parameters. Here we enter the SDS, the spectral acceleration, 0.6, and the overstrength factor omega zero is three. Here at the bottom we specify the seismic design criteria. For tension is a non-yielding plate and a ductile anchorage, and for shear is a non-yielding plate and non-yielding anchorage. Here we enter the material properties of the support, and here the material properties of the base plate. And here we specify that the base plate will be forced to remain elastic. This is recommended to ensure the strain compatibility, and is also compatible with the ACI uh, uh, anchoring provisions. Here at the bottom we specify the location and size and number of uh, anchor rods. So we have three end anchor rods outside of the flanges, and two side anchor rods between flanges. In total, 10 anchor rods, diameter 1 inch. If we go to the Araglance tab, we can see a summary of the results in just one screen. Here we can see that everything is passing, except here at the bottom, these two ratios. One is the shear design ratio, is over 1.0, it's failing, and also the combined stress ratio is 1.24. So we need to check these two deficiencies and see how we can fix them. We go to the Anchorage tab, Tension Analysis tab. Here we enter the information for the Anchorage intention. Since the base plate is eccentric and close to the borders of the support, it's unlikely that the tension breakout capacity will be enough to resist the tension loads. Therefore, we need to specify anchor reinforcement. In this case, we are specifying one rebar number five per rod so that the load will be transferred to the rebars and then to the foundation. If we go to the Condense tab, we can see a more detailed set of calculations grouped by a topic, showing the controlling load combinations. Here we can see that the base plate thickness is 1.29, about one inch and a quarter. In the anchorage design, here in the tension analysis, we can see that the controlling limit state is pull-out strength, and the ratio is 0.50. In shear, this is the controlling load combination, and the controlling limit state is steel strength, which is 1.06, which is already failing, meaning that we need to increase the capacity in shear. If we go to the shear analysis tab, the shear will be resisted by anchor rods only. If we check this box, that means that the washer will be welded to the base plate, and therefore all the anchor rods will be effective in shear. Right now is unchecked, meaning that only the front anchor rods are effective. So if we check this box, 
So all the anchor rods are effective now, and now the shear analysis is passing. So the controlling limit state now is the pry out in shear. The ratio is 0.58. So the combined stress ratio is 0.82, and this is the controlling load combination. We go to the detail tab. We can see here a more detailed set of calculations, step by step, with exposed formulas and references to the ACI and AISC codes. So the base plate design. This is the anchorage design with all the formulas from ACI anchoring provisions, with all the references here. Tension analysis with the controlling load combination. So the concrete breakout. And finally, the tension uh, design ratio is 0.50. Here is the shear analysis with the uh, controlling load combination. And here is the shear design ratio, 0.58. And the tension shear interaction is 0.82. Graphically, we click on the graph tab. We go to the base plate tab. This is a biaxial base plate. The blue area is the bearing area in contact with the support. So in this white area, the anchor rods are in tension. The maximum tension per anchor rod is 12.7 kips. And the maximum compression in the bearing area is 2.1 KSI for this controlling load combination. We go to the tension breakout. We see here that the program calculates the tension breakout area based on the condition of the supports and considering only the anchor rods that are in tension, which are these yellow anchor rods. These are in compression, so are not considered in this calculation. And this is the area. Also in this analysis, the effective embedment depth is, is using the calculations. If we go to the shear breakout tab, we can see here in plan and in elevation views, the shear breakout area calculation. Please note that all the anchor rods are effective in shear in this analysis. And this is the calculation of the area for this load combination. Controlling. We go to the at a glance tab. We see here a summary of the results. Now everything is passing. The bearing stresses are under the limit. The ratio is 0.91. The base plate thickness is one and a quarter inches. In the anchorage design, the tension design ratio is 0.50. The shear design ratio is 0.58, and uh, the tension shear interaction design ratio is 0.82. Everything is passing, and the design is acceptable. We can see here how easy it is to model and complete the design using ASIP steel. With this, we conclude the presentation of the design of a biaxial base plate example using ASIP steel. Please subscribe to the channel if you want to receive notifications in the future for similar videos. Thank you for your attention.